try and understand the numbers game and how it's going to really play out here on Vasu. What are the numbers looking like? Will this government survive? Well, Sweta, uh, the numbers at the moment obviously are not looking good for the UPA because uh, with the exit of Mamta Banerjee, uh, they're reduced to a minority. They're down to 254, which is 18 short of a simple majority in Parliament. Now, this is, of course, just the UPA as a core group uh, without the outside support of the BSP, uh, the SP and the RJD. Uh, with that, they still have 301. But remember, these are people who are supporting from the outside so it becomes effectively a minority government. Now, the only way the government can survive is either if any of these outside constituents decide to join the government or they remain outside, but they decide to abstain in any critical voting, which then therefore reduces the, the numbers in parliament and gives the UPA uh, just about a breather to scrape through. But it's an extremely fragile position. Uh, we're already seeing statements, Shweta, from... Uh, Mulan Singh party, the Samajwadi party, saying that they are going to uh, wait and watch and they are disappointed with the government's uh, treatment of its allies. Uh, the BSP also saying wait and watch. Uh, so, in effect, while Mamta Banerjee may not have brought down this government, uh, she may certainly have shortened its tenure. All right, Vasu, how does it go here on? What do we see really happen over the next uh, few hours or days? What is the government's real real strategy going to be here on? Well, I think uh, a two-fold strategy, Shweta. One, we've already seen Janardhan Varedi, Congress spokesperson, saying that he's going to, uh, the party rather, is going to study Mamta's statements, her demands, and uh, will come up with an appropriate response. Does that mean that there is some slight window of a possibility that the government might actually uh, perhaps roll back is too strong a word, but find some way of tweaking their decisions to try and placate Mamta Banerjee, given that she's given them a three-day deadline uh, until Friday when her ministers will resign. That's possibility one. Possibility two is that simultaneously, they're obviously already working the phones to their allies, uh, outside partners, as I mentioned, like the BSP and like Mulan Singh Yadav, to see who can come on board, either formally join the government or at least guarantee that they won't bring it down. So I think both these tracks have already started. Uh, we're already likely to see closed-door meetings now uh, between top Congress leaders uh, to work out the next step, essentially steps to try and salvage the government, most likely without going back on the decisions they've taken. But, as you know, politics is open-ended, and uh, we might well see the government having to buckle in on uh, some of those decisions. We just have to wait and watch. All right. Will the government buckle under Mamta's pressure or not? And where will that take this government? That discussion is something we are going to do on this show. But let's listen in to what Janardhan Dwedi had to say as Vasu was just telling us all about what the Congress's reaction has been. Trinamool Congress ko hamesha humne apna bahumulya sahyogi mana hai. और जो कुछ ममता जी ने आज कहा है उसके बावजूद जब तक कोई अंतिम परिणाम सामने नहीं आता हम उन्हें अपना बहुमूल्य सहयोगी मानते रहेंगे उन्होंने कुछ बातें कही हैं कुछ मुद्दे उठाए हैं निश्चय ही उन पर सरकार से बातचीत होगी और चर्चा होगी इसके बाद जो नतीजा निकलेगा जो परिणाम सामने आएगा उसकी जानकारी आपको दे दी जाएगी all right, let's take forward what my colleague Srinivasan Jain was telling us in terms of options before the government right now. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, if the government decides to, in some ways, please Mamta Banerjee, perhaps instead of six cylinders, she, they'll say, okay, you know what, we'll increase it to ten cylinders and we'll do a bit of a rollback of the diesel hike. Do you think that would make the government more weak than what it was even before it introduced some of these reforms? Kiran? Well, you know, I think this is, you know, they are between a, you know, a, a, hard, a rock and a hard place. I mean, it's, it's very difficult for the government really uh, to try and roll back uh, a stand that they've taken. And, well, there are some concessions they can concede, 
on uh, you know the the diesel hike and on the uh, lpg front and you know if they really start conceding on fdi i think it's going to really reflect very poorly on the government's ability uh, to do something about sending the right uh, you know signals for uh, investment so to me i think i agree with some uh, what someone uh, said earlier on that you know it's better for the government to go down fighting like uh, the prime minister said and uh, rather than give in to everything that mamta banerjee has demanded because i think mamta banerjee has held this government uh, to ransom for far too long and you know it, it, i think there has to come a point when the government has to be strong and bite the bullet all right uh, sanjeev aga would you agree with that view it's better that you go down fighting rather than compromise at this stage and seen and send out the message that yes once again you did decide to give in to mamta banerjee no i i i completely endorse that i would go a step further uh, i would like uh, the prime minister to take on an even more difficult reform by his uh, by his standards uh, before he goes down fighting he should kick out three ministers three top ministers from his cabinet who are known to be corrupt that would be a very powerful signal uh, not just to his government but to successive governments and uh, i think the reforms which are required are not just policy reforms they are reforms in basic standards of governance this is the real problem this is the real reason why the upa has not been able to look mamta banerjee in the face because let's remember mamta banerjee is one of the few politicians who is personally honest and that allows her to get away with very irresponsible Uh, economics and politics so i think both things are required just being clever with policy is good but it should be accompanied with some standard of governance being raised i think it's not only the politics that has mattered in taking this decision by by the prime minister to bite the bullet right. it is the fear generated by having touched low 5.1% growth, growth i think that that, is, that, that somewhere and, did did, and did shock the government that kind also. of growth will lead to more unemployment and there are going to be social political repercussions of the unemployment so close to 2014 second was the credibility with the middle class they right. want to win over the middle class right which is which is linked with the sensex also to some extent you would know better than i read a quick word from you in terms yeah. of this new found confidence that the government has really found and everybody is trying to understand the reason for it like like we had kiran earlier say that why go in for this rush of reforms why not space it out uh, many people believe that it's got a lot to do with a new finance minister in place the fact that mr chidambaram understands his economics he is the one who's actually pushing for all these reforms to take place i know nalin wants to respond to that but first to you arjit true uh, looking at uh, mamta's reaction i think the government had very little chance but to push it in one day because <laughs> they they will fall, uh, fall short of allies probably if they do it over a period of time but anyway it it had to do a lot also with the message the government had to send out a message that they are now back in business uh, as we say we mean business so they had to <laughs> make that point right. so they had to uh, do it in in these days and if you look at it most of these decisions were pending fdi in uh, multi brand retail had been approved almost a year back in single brand retail had been uh, had been approved by the cabinet almost a year back they had just held it because they were not on the road pushing just, it through just one one quick clarification there how do you respond to those who say you know what you shouldn't have done all of it together in one go do the diesel hike let mamta banerjee digest that wait for a bit and then go in for fdi and retail should would that have been a better strategy uh, i don't think that mamta banerjee would have ever been uh, you know the government would have been ever able to convince her on the issue of fdi so i think at the time when this was done remember that the tmc uh, mp was not also in the cabinet meeting on that day so and it was not part of the initial cabinet agenda it was done at right, the last exactly. moment by the cabinet exactly. so i think there was always a thinking and there was a clear a uh, view within the congress government that there would be a huge amount of opposition from tmc on this they decided to go uh, nonetheless ahead so they've done they have perhaps done their maths and nalin uh, how how about the view that the government was actually expecting this they were prepared for it they were prepared for mamta withdrawing support and that's why they said okay we're ready for this situation i really can't speculate i really can't speculate because but there is uh, a good chance they've already no, spoken to know. others no i i could i would look at the, absolutely the you know the converse to it is that this government didn't care 
And I think that, you know, if you really look at it, Mr. Sharad, why do we forget? Just a few weeks ago, Mr. Sharad Pawar didn't attend cabinet and he said, I don't wish to be a minister. And he was saying that there is lack of coordination. Ms. Banerjee has raised the same question here. So I think when the government wants to take a decision that it's convinced about, I mean, within two days, they can allocate a coal block to a relative of a minister. So, I mean, they are capable of taking decisions. which suit them. <laughs> and I think that's the bottom line. I, I, think, I think government knew what kind of reaction Mamta will evoke. Even if they had But did they expect that she would withdraw support? Is that a surprise no, to the government no, according to no, you? But no, I, that, I, that's a surprise to that, everybody. That's a surprise to everyone. But they thought by giving more uh, LPG cylinders, she can be brought around. But diesel, they made it very clear. It's not right. possible to go back on diesel. In fact, that Mr. Was, Chidambaram, is, sir, FDI yesterday said that, 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 that they FDI, will be able to convince F, her. FDI has become a theoretical issue. Because they have allowed the states to choose Absolutely. whether you vote. Oh, no, but on that I must no. make a clarification, sir. So, so that has become a theoretical issue as far as Mamta is concerned. The real point was on the diesel. She was also emphasizing diesel. diesel. She was not bothered about more but, about but LPG. But her demands either. are all three. Her demands, Arijit, we were hearing yes, and you were yeah. translating. Yes. She's talked about all three. She has said 24 LPG cylinders. Yes. She's talked about rolling back diesel hike mm -hmm. and rolling back FDI and retail. Now, the, that's I, clearly, that's are, clearly unreasonable. Those, and I'll tell you the thinking which the government was doing when, uh, as Mr. Dua is saying about the rollback. You see, uh, if you do a calculation, every dollar reduction in crude prices can help you bring down the fuel prices by around 30 paise. Right. And every, uh, as and as the rupee strengthens, so every one rupee strengthening of the rupee versus the dollar further allows you to reduce the oil prices by about 60 paise. So if you look at it, at the moment the government is in fact in a position to bring it down by one rupee because the rupee has strengthened. But would they uh, like to bring it down for Mamta Banerjee now or they would for the middle class? The question no. was the credibility on one side and the feeling on the Mamta on the other side that she has been snubbed. Now these are the class between snubbing and credibility. <laughs> I think they've cho chosen credibility. They've the chosen government. credibility. It's all about, it's all about uh, good economics and even if it means bad politics, they're willing to I face the know, consequences. I'm sorry, I don't agree with this about good economics and bad politics. Because but why did you have FDI in your manifesto? One minute, hang on. I'll come to that also, but and it's a long answer. By the so right. no, no, hang on, thank you very much. And I was waiting. I was surprised you didn't <laughs> ask me earlier. So, Lalil, but I need Lalil, to is, Lalil is prepared, yes, I'm prepared to, answer to answer all those that. questions. Yeah, very comfortably, yeah. because I think the point that we are making throughout, and you have to hear me out for a minute, is that we are opposing FTI because we believe that it is inopportune at the moment. Second is, and I would like to draw attention to two what articles. What would be the opportunity? Yeah, I'll tell you. Certainly okay. it is opportune. Mr. JT has written a couple of articles and he has spelled it out in great detail. The first point is manufacturing. You know, we keep getting this example of China. Now, China is a manufacturing hub of the world. So, you know, when you open up FDI there, it's okay. It doesn't matter because you're procuring Chinese goods, selling it to the Chinese there and the rest of the world. In India, I think you have to congratulate uh, really the manufacturing sector for working under what trying conditions. They are absolutely getting no power. They run on high cost. There are reform problems that they are facing. So in despite that, you suddenly open up the floodgates because these organizations, whether it's Walmart or anyone, they're not coming here for a social cause. They are in their rights to come here. But for what's, wrong? what's wrong in Nothing making wrong. money? No, I'm and, saying they're not in the jobs rights. To the people of Certainly, India. but at the same time, not costing jobs to the Indians. And I think that's the point we are making substantially. There are these are counter reforms in our view because there's no concession that we are taking back. I mean, we are just simply opening a market. And second, I find it fascinating. Just, uh, just one. I, I'll finish. Then sorry. we'll get into this debate. The, uh, the second point I want to make is that, you know, we keep saying that about, you know, the economy needed it. We have a high fiscal deficit. You know, one like, so many lakh crores have gone. Just one 2G reversal is going to get this government in the recession period over a lakh of crore rupees, which was 1,652 uh, crores to now 14,000 as the reverse price. So I think the management has been wrong. So you, if you land yourself in the crisis, you just can't impose all of it on the middle class or even the poor. It's not fair. But on, the, on, on the FDI and multi-brand retail, at the moment the rules ask for about 50% sourcing from within the country. Right. And the big question is, you allow Indian retailers to acquire from anywhere because at the moment Indians are also there in organized retail. So everybody's there. Pantaloon is there. Reliance Retail is there. All the big Indian corporates are there in retail. So how are they going to be any different from any Walmart or Tesco? Okay. Corporates globally behave so, the same so way. Mr. Right? Mr. Sanjeev Aga, quick response to all the points that have been made by Nalin with regard to FDI and retail. No, no, normally, I, uh, whenever I listen to senior people from the BJP, I, uh, uh, I respect their uh, economic views, but I think, uh, I'm afraid, uh, this is my feeling, their views on FDI in retail and some other topics lack sincerity. Their, their arguments, and uh, they just don't sound credible. Uh, I, I think BJP's national duty is to 
follow their conscience and do the right thing. When you're talking of bad politics and bad reform, I would also include the opposition parties. Uh, I, you know, you can keep arguing, uh, but I have met many of them individually, and I don't think uh, what they speak is what they really believe in their heart of hearts. Well, I, I'm going to say it on the record, and I have no hesitation in saying that, that I do personally believe that FDI in retail at this point of time is inopportune. And I've written an article on it, and I do believe that Mr. Jaitley also, who's written it, and the leadership, top leadership, does believe it. We feel it is inopportune today, and we stand by that. I think you work yourself into believing it. Akali turn, turn, turn around, around completely. They, they had actually farmers. asked for it. Akali had actually it's been one of the first ones who was it actually Punjab, asking. Punjab retailer, section of Punjab retailer is opposed to, but Punjab former, they think they would have got more out of FDI. All right, Kiran, show your response to the fact that we're just seeing this complete division when it comes to the response to FDI and retail. But didn't the government actually adopt a very smart strategy this time around, just asking states that, you know what, if you want it, take it. If you don't want it, don't take it. Well, you know, I, before I answer that, I just wanted to quickly rebut Ms. Nalin's comments that this is not the opportune time. So is BJP saying that the opportune time is when they come to power? I mean, let's not, you know, Certainly get into not. this hypocrisy. Certainly not. Certainly not, madam. No, certainly not. We seem to we are not saying that. No, no. You all could laugh on this, but certainly not. We are not saying that. Right. We are not right. saying that. Well, we I don't buy that uh, story. <laughs> no problem, ma'am. That doesn't matter. The point is that we certainly are not saying that when we are in government, it's opportune. We, say, we are talking about fundamentals of the economy. And if we just go back, and we'll talk on facts, 2004-05 economic survey speaks about the condition of the, economic, of the economy. And Mr. Chidambaram himself as finance minister gave a certificate, an economy which was no longer in shortages.